Good evening, my brothers and sisters. <clears throat> I love the octave of Easter because we get to celebrate Easter for eight days. My favorite part of Easter growing up, if you probably don't know, I'll admit, as a child, wasn't mass. It was the food after. It was the meal. And I have one of these families where we eat and we don't stop. We start with hors d'oeuvres, vegetables and dip, being Maltese, these things that are called pastizis. I don't have time to describe them because it would take me all night. They're so wonderful and so good. Cheese and crackers, some summer sausage or other types of smoked sausages. Then there's always dinner. The ham, the lamb, the cheesy potatoes, the rice pilaf, the wonderful salad with Italian dressing with tomato and onion on it, some nice pita bread or some good baked rolls. Maybe some green bean casserole, cabbage and noodles, all these things at the table. And why do we come together to eat? Why do we come together to celebrate? Especially Easter Sunday. And then, of course, you know, you take the leftovers home and you, you, know, you do different things with them. Like crunchy ham casserole. You take the nice smoked or cooked sausage and you cut them lengthwise. And you get some of that nice bread, rustic bread, and you put a little mustard, maybe a little horseradish or a little spicy mustard, and you make yourself like a half sandwich with one of the pieces of sausage and you eat it the next day. Maybe it's a couple hard-boiled eggs because, you know, your family colored some or just hard-boiled them to eat them. But what does it mean to eat a meal? to gather as family. See, the reason I bring up this question, the reason I described, in a sense, an Easter meal, is because this year, yes, it was different. But just because it was different doesn't mean it had to be less holy. It doesn't mean that we couldn't use technology for the good and Skype in family. And yeah, maybe we don't have the abundance of food at the table because it's two or three of us. Or maybe it's something totally different because of supplies. But see, why did Jesus have this meal? The third time he gathered with the apostles in John's gospel. Because see, he's bringing them back. Because what do you do at a meal? You talk, you discuss, you eat, you enjoy each other's company. This gospel passage is a time for the apostles to recognize that yes, Christ was resurrected. Yes, he was resurrected. And yes, in that resurrection, he took on a different form. But if you allow him to love you and you love him, you'll recognize him. And there's no need to ask the obvious questions, but to just have the conversation. To learn just a bit more of what Jesus wants you to know, of what Christ wants you to know before you go into the world and preach the gospel. I always like the part about Peter being lightly clad, jumping off, swimming 100 yards, and like forgetting about the buddies on the boat to drag in the fish. See, it's that impulsiveness of Peter that Jesus keeps working on. He doesn't want to, in a sense, stop the enthusiasm. He just wants to iron out the impulsiveness. 
Why? Because in the Acts of the Apostles today, you hear of Peter preaching, preaching so well, even under harsh questioning, that 5,000 people convert because of his passion for Christ and his belief. That's what we celebrate in the octave is our belief in his resurrection. Is our belief that he will carry us through anything and everything, all trials. And even during those trials, he wants us to gather and to talk and to break bread and to communicate with each other. So yeah, it might just be you at home, it might be you and your wife, it might be you and your children, doesn't matter. I discovered that on my phone, I can talk to two different people at the same time, and I can see them and they can see me. It's kind of scary because, well, you know, who wants to look at me through their phone, right? But you get to do that, you have the chance to do that. So as we figure out new ways to communicate to our brothers and sisters in faith, to our brothers and sisters, realize that in that communication we attempt, God will perfect it. In that trying, God will perfect it. And as long as we continue to communicate to him who is our Lord, he will continue to perfect us to iron out those rough edges, like the impulsiveness of Peter. Not his enthusiasm, his impulsiveness. So that when true, tr when true trial comes, you'll be ready to say, yes, I believe. And yes, I believe in Jesus Christ. He is my Lord and Savior. And I do love him. And I know him. And I do things because of him. And in him and through him. So in closing, my brothers and sisters, whenever you sit and whenever you have a conversation, especially during a meal, invite Jesus into it, number one. Number two, enjoy each other's company. And number three, don't ever at the end of the conversation forget to say what? I love you. <laughs>